video is sponsored by Squarespace. So most book lovers out there discuss the act of falling in love with books, usually at a moment in their childhood. They discuss how they went to their local libraries with their parents, or they fell in love with some wholesome Miss Honey-esque librarian, who, or picked up Harry Potter or a series of unfortunate events at the age of nine and they never stopped reading ever since. Uh, they carry a book under their arm throughout their childhood all the way to adulthood. Well, that's not my story. I didn't read as a child. I was the slowest reader in my class and I didn't understand why I couldn't see pictures in my head when I was reading like the others so that they could. You know, for me, reading was physically painful and it was an act of labour, one which hurt my head and my eyes and confused me. And whenever I read, it was just myself and a dry, hard to read text on the page. I didn't see dragons or monsters or castles and demons and ghosts and magicians and magical schools when I read books. What I saw was words, such as and and but and commas and spaces and words that I couldn't pronounce. Weirdly enough, the only thing I was ever willingly reading as a young child uh, were Shakespeare plays, to be exact. When I was 10, I was cast in Macbeth in a small school production of the, you know, famed Scottish play, and I found Shakespeare unexpectedly easy to read. Because unlike the other books that I was reading at home, the words in Shakespeare were sort of pronounced how they were spelt most of the time, and you had to speak them out loud for it to make sense, and it was rhythmic, so it kept me engaged. And I became so obsessed with Shakespeare that by the age of 13, I performed in my first official theatrical production of a Shakespeare play. And then throughout my teenage years, my life goal was to become an actor. What's funny is no one knew that even at that point in my life, I was dyslexic, not even me. So teachers were really confused as to why a student would be so willing to spend her days reading Shakespeare plays obsessively, but refuse to read anything for leisure, you know, something far more relaxing or grounded, like a novel or short story collection. So naturally, when I expressed interest in studying English literature at university, purely for the Shakespeare element in the third year, everyone discouraged me. They told me that I had no passion for books or reading, certainly not enough to survive a degree dedicated to close text analysis. And I was told I lacked the curiosity, the skill or the passion for books, and I, I would hate the degree. But it would seem my love for Shakespeare was far more stubborn than what their discouragement. You know, I wanted to study the Bard, and he was my only consistent passion for almost a decade, and I wanted to become more intimate with his texts. You know, you learn them at school, but I decided I wanted to learn more about what he was writing, so I chose to also study ancient to classical texts alongside literature to understand his employment of classical metaphors and allusions and mythology within his writing. But until that point in my life, I'd never studied Latin or history at school, I'd never done any kind of history, never studied any ancient texts, and obviously I never read books for fun either. So I took a massive gamble, and I applied for a course in classics and English literature against everyone's advice. And a decade later, here I am, doing my PhD in classics, specialising in classical reception and contemporary literature. And now my whole world is books. I worked as a bookseller for over five years. I took graphic design courses to learn how to design book covers, which I do for a hobby. I make my own hardbacks and I've designed and bound books. I've painted book edges for fun. I write stories. I read obsessively. I love reading book reviews and I keep up to date with publishing trends. Discovering reading at 19 years old isn't your traditional bibliophilic origin story. I don't have teachers to credit me for encouraging me to read. But I have got acting coaches who saw my passion in Shakespeare and encouraged me to pursue it. Ironically, Shakespeare taught me more about close reading and intertextual analysis than any teacher ever did. No one in my life supported me discovering books. If anything, I was actively discouraged and put down around books. I was told I was too lazy and educated and lacked curiosity and imagination. I wasn't diagnosed with dyslexia until I was 31 years old. But books found me regardless of my learning disability. My university library became my safe space throughout my illnesses and isolation. My bookselling colleagues became my reading community. And books became my friends when I was alone and had no one in my life. I discovered reading at my own pace, at my own time, in my own style. And for years I had been told that I should read for fun, but no one ever defined what fun was. Because everyone has their own definition of fun. In the most limited sense, 
reading for fun is what one thinks of when they involve escapism. But that's not always a legitimate motive for reading. I didn't want to escape. And without an imagination, I couldn't escape. I'm not someone who sees images in my head when I'm reading. So reading for that purpose was completely fruitless and being advised to do so was pointless. However, I do love finding patterns. And that I discovered was my superpower. I read to find patterns. I read not to disconnect from the world, but to connect to the world that I feel disconnected from. I read to unlock the links between words and images and styles and references. Reading for me is like digging through an archaeological site where I uncover things every writer may not even remember that they put there at the time. I read books to piece the fragments of other people's imaginations together and weave a tapestry of their literary world. I had the curiosity all along, but no one saw my potential for reading because it didn't fit the norm. I didn't want to escape like the other children, yet when I showed a desire to understand Shakespeare in more depth, I was told I was too unintelligent to understand rather than encouraged to pursue a different motive for reading. So if you're someone who's always thought, I would love to read, but I don't know how to get into reading, then this video is for you. I'm going to share with you my experience and how I fell in love with reading, despite having disadvantages such as dyslexia and other neurodivergences in my way, and also active discouragement. I want to encourage people to learn how to fall in love with books at their own way. But before we get into the details of how to do that, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is a loyal supporter of my channel and I cannot thank them enough. And I, I'm so grateful because I've built all my main business websites over the past few years with Squarespace, including my beautiful website now, The Lady of the Library, where I talk about everything, blog all my latest desires. And I love how intuitive and easy it makes website design and layout. Coding isn't my thing, I'm more of an arty writer kind of person, but Squarespace has made it so easy for me to have this beautiful professional looking website without all the frustrating, irritating, trickly coding. I just have to drag and drop my content where I want it. And also I can expand my business as I expand as a creator online. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that makes it easy for you to monetize your content and expertise in a way that fits your brand. There's a member area that lets you sell your courses or classes to followers. And it also has an inbuilt email campaign option where you can collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers all from your website you don't have to go to different places all the time and collect all the data it's just there Squarespace also has a built-in analytics feature that gives you insight into who's visiting your site traffic sources time on spite and most read content audience geography and so much more so if you want to expand your business or just build a beautiful website for your blogging leisure, then go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash lady of the library to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So when people give advice about how to fall in love with reading, the advice primarily focuses on what you should be reading. You know, they tell you to reread an old classic, uncover a new genre that you've always been curious about, join a book club or find your mood but they never mention motives. Wanting to read for the sake of reading is not a solution for a sustainable and lifelong passion for books. Some people read because they just want to be part of book talk or bookstagram. Others just want to read because they seem dark academian and look quite pretty, and they want to be seen as academically stylish. But reading for the sake of reading or superficial reasons won't bring out the best in you. Like diet and exercise, reading should be tailored to meet your lifestyle, passion, interests, energy levels and mindset. How your brain works is unique to you and discovering a love of books involves a deep dive into the self, understanding how your brain works and how you want your mind to engage with the world around you. So to learn how to love books, you have to ask yourself, what does your brain want to do? Does it want to escape or does it want to dig deeper? Does it want to connect with others or does it want to learn? Does it want to analyse linguistics and sentence structures, or does it want to solve mysteries and connect the dots between cultures, languages and mythologies? What your brain finds fun will be unique to you, and once you uncover what motivates your brain, you'll find out what kind of books work for you, which will keep you engaged in a passionate reading habit that will last a lifetime. So many of us were let down by our education system, libraries, parents and teachers, especially people with learning disabilities or other neurodivergences. Some people go through their whole lives never reading books because they're told it's not their medium. They've convinced themselves that there's no connection between them and literature. But sadly, they're most likely echoing the narratives of adults in their lives who dismiss them for not fitting the mould. Had I listened to my family members and my teachers' advice and feedback, I would never have discovered books. I would never have become a bookseller for all those years. I would never have studied literature and classics. I would never have read hundreds upon hundreds of novels, nor would I have ever done a PhD in literature. I wouldn't be the person I am today had I not discovered reading. 
My whole personality has changed once books became part of my soul. It's the biggest passion I've ever had in my life. It's far more significant than even acting was and Shakespeare was at the time, and that was huge. I wouldn't be the person I am today had I listened to the people around me. Reading is life-changing and life-saving, but the motivation for reading needs to come from within and from a place of self-love and growth, not asceticism. Why you want to read should be intimately connected with your mind, how you want to grow as a person and who you want to become. Discovering reading is having a connection with the self that's spiritual and meditative in nature, even for those of us who aren't spiritual. Because it's the one act that we do that creates passages in our mind like no other. Reading connects the dots within yourself and builds upon a foundation within you, lying dormant for years and years until you awaken it with a single passage or sentence that shakes you to your very core. So what's my advice for falling in love with books? Well, my advice is to first fall in love with the image of your mind that you want to house in your head, the soul that you want to house in your body, and the being you want to bring into the world. And then read accordingly. Feed it with words and watch it grow. I hope this video helped you, and if it did, please consider liking and subscribing. My apologies for also having very limited mouth movement. If you don't aren't familiar, I went through some oral surgery and my lower lip is stitched down, so I can't really talk, so apologies for that. But thank you for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. Until next time, I shall see you soon for another video. And remember, books save lives. So keep reading.